Yeah, se security is very key for us. Um, and again, you understand, uh, you're dealing with money here, and therefore we have to ensure that the security is um, up to par. And therefore what we've done is we've led a couple of uh, 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 security uh, devices within the architecture, but not only so. Within the architecture, we've also had to zone the environment differently so as to ensure that you only access what you have to access. Even internally, my colleagues within the teams, uh, whenever they access M-Pesa, then they only access it whenever, uh, they only access what they have to access internally. So going to the low level uh, architectural details, uh, just to mention, we have a couple of devices, of course, we have the anti dedos uh, to prevent us from uh, disease attacks. We have um, intrusion prevention systems. Uh, we have um, web application firewalls. Uh, beyond that is now the zoning where we've zoned the environment differently. Whenever you log into M-Pesa as an engineer uh, within Safaricom, you, you, you actually, and just to mention, not everybody can access that environment. A few selected few can access the environment. But also when you access that environment, the moment you log in, we actually start recording whatever you are doing within the system. So that in an event you erroneously execute a command that ends up causing us problems, then we're able to play back and actually we're able to recover the system faster. So with the moment you access that environment, it's a highly restricted environment. We start recording everything that you do within that core ecosystem of M-Pesa. And that is uh, how we provide that security from the infrastructure level, the processes, user management access, and all the other processes that we've embedded in them, uh, then we're able to, to, to do so. There are several programs that our cyber team uh, that we work uh, closely with uh, run uh, just to secure M-Pesa. They do a lot of vulnerability checks within the environment. They scan the environment just to ensure that we are not running you know, outdated versions. And as and when we do so, then it's our responsibility to ensure that we actually upgrade our systems to the latest versions so that we are not vulnerable. Uh, we don't run vulnerable versions uh, within our ecosystem. So we have a couple of programs in that, in that case that assure us from a security uh, point of view. So it covers platform processes and even people uh, where we have a team that is dedicated, highly skilled, that ensures that M-Pesa is monitored from a security perspective 24-7 and they're able to remediate anything uh, that they see uh, within. Actually, the other thing I almost forgot to mention is that whenever you log into M-Pesa and you make a change on the system, the team that handles our cyber is able to see that. Uh, that you've actually made a change within the system. And if that change does not have a corresponding approval, because every change that you do on M-Pesa must be approved. And for my case, any change that goes into the core M-Pesa every other day or touches around the M-Pesa environment, I have to approve. And therefore, that means if you do a change that is not approved, then it's a, a team that actually, independent team that monitors that. And when they pick that, then they're able to flag it and the few process follows after that. So basically, it's a layers of ensuring that you know we have a secure ecosystem uh, for our customers. The moment you log in, uh, you try to remove uh, a folder uh, from the server, uh, Linux uh, command there. What would happen ideally is an email is triggered automatically to our, cy to our cyber teams. You'll see an email from cyber saying, we've seen somebody has tried to execute X command, you know, and then uh, we're able to see so. On a database layer, you try to go there, you run a command, update X, uh, you should be actually not able to do so. And uh, there's one thing that most of the people usually ask me, Felix, now, can you update my balances on M-Pesa? Actually, the way we've architected the system, uh, jointly with the partner, is just to ensure that uh, actually nobody can update the M-Pesa balances. So we have uh, a series of keys. I will not go to the details of that, but what happens is if you attempt today to go to the database and update the balance of a customer, that customer will never be able to transact because your previous balance forms the, you know, the, 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 the series of the next uh, balance and actually the next action that would come from your mobile phone is will be the, will be tied to that whatever you did previously so what happens in that case is for sure if you attempt to update the balances then uh, that customer will not be able to transact so, so, so those are some of the low level security items that we've been able to embed within the system and uh, there are many more actually uh, that are there because when we always embed new things that come on board uh, for example anything that comes from an ai perspective anything that comes from a web uh, that we're able to pick using our web firewalls, we're able to learn and actually enhance our rules uh, to protect our customers even better. And most importantly, ensure that the system is robust and secure uh, uh, and uh, foolproof from um, any intrusion. So where we are today, yeah, we have the role of AI in terms of uh, fraud detection where we, when we, where we note patterns that are not, uh, you know, they're not usual, and then we're able to block that. From a transaction perspective, just to break it down in a nutshell, we also have a team within uh, our ecosystem that just focuses on fraud detection, where you find a customer, for example, who's doing a transaction that they, they, they don't usually do. 
So using AI, then we're able to prevent that transaction because it could be a customer is being defrauded. Of course, these are uh, cases where you have to learn for some time using machine learning. You have to enhance those models. So it takes a bit of time. Uh, but where we are today, I can comfortably mention that uh, with the support of our fraud team, we've been able to get somewhere in terms of being able to detect some of those transactions that would have been fraudulent and being able to protect our customers. As much as in some cases, because again, as I mentioned, these models have to learn for some time, we could prevent a transaction that was actually supposed to go through. But as we go to the next generation M-Pesa, and as we evolve M-Pesa further, then we're going to enhance those models also to get to a point where we are even getting more real time in terms of preventing uh, your transaction and embedding now AI into the transaction. That is a journey that we have to undertake. Because remember, any change that you do on the core M-Pesa could disrupt its technology. Anything could go wrong, you know. So we have to be very careful that as we introduce all these new capabilities, then we introduce them in a very careful manner, well-tested, well-practiced. Uh, and uh, by the time we are going live, then it's something that has been fully tested before we introduce it to our customers. And uh, just to mention, the series of things that we do before we take our systems live, that's why we're able to do those upgrades you know, seamlessly about two in a month without downtime. We do system integration tests. We do a lot of user acceptance tests. We do performance tests. We do even what we call a dry runs, just to simulate actually how the go-live night would be. We route some customers into the environment. They are able to transact in that environment. Then we do a flashback uh, before doing uh, the actual uh, uh, cutover. So basically, we do practice a lot of things before uh, getting there. And those are some of the steps that we will undertake even before we enhance some of the AI models that we do have in our ecosystem uh, to be able to protect our customers and to offer even better services uh, to our customers. And PESA, we have APIs. APIs are available. So in most cases, you have a big partner who comes on board and they tell you that uh, you have to consume my APIs. And on the other side, we are like, no, you have to consume our APIs uh, because, uh, again, we already have partners who are already on the platform. So we've had uh, a couple of um, discussions on that. But again, from a technology perspective, uh, considering we have a common goal to meet uh, for the business, then we've, in most cases, agreed and uh, been able to, uh, to get to a solution uh, uh, to deliver. The most complex now that uh, was between systems uh, that we actually were able to, to deliver within uh, the shortest time uh, was the, I'll pick an example, was the Hustler Fund uh, delivery. You know, Hustler Fund uh, is a delivery that uh, we had about 40 to 45 days there about to deliver the entire proposition. And uh, because of our agile ways of working in Safaricom and leveraging on the technology that we already have, which is the multi tenant lending platform, remember uh, the, the rules then were such that uh, whenever you opt in on one of the networks, then you should not be able to opt in on the, any of the other networks or you should not get a limit. And therefore, it meant we have to integrate to our other partners um, through an integrator. Uh, and uh, again, we're integrating in an environment within the shortest time and therefore that was a bit challenging but we were able to crack it because of our agile ways of working uh, and uh, seamlessly at the day of go live the system never crashed and pesa never crashed at that time the system continued processing uh, normally for lisa is one of the other systems uh, that we brought it on board a, a very complex integration where anytime a customer is not part of the course it's a, it's a system that runs uh, our credit so what happens is while transacting, we needed to prompt the customer that actually you're running out of balance and therefore you have a limit of X that you could actually utilize. So uh, in, coming in between that transaction uh, was a bit uh, complex and we still had to crack it uh, within the shortest period of time. That's another complex uh, integration that we had to undertake uh, within. I'm really proud of the team uh, that uh, really transforms life uh, from a financial inclusion perspective. Uh, we operate 24-7 with the team. So what happens when I come in the morning, uh, I come in, I check what the team um, did the previous day uh, from a system perspective, but more so checking the different KPIs within the system. And anytime I do so, check everything is below uh, the metrics, the team we were able to mitigate X, we were able to mitigate Y, and we are creating impact by building new products within our different codes in financial services, then I really feel proud of that. I'm passionate about financial services. I'm passionate about mobile money. And that's why there are even days when whenever we see a risk, the team, we can pull as many hours as we, you know, as we can, because we know we are doing so for a common a goal, and most importantly, ensuring that a customer somewhere there is able to push a transaction. I told you we have 4,000 transactions per second. So if we have 4,000 customers transacting per second at peak. So you can imagine if we are just down for a minute, we go down almost 4,000 by six, about 240,000. 
transactions uh, or 40,000 uh, 40, requests from customers. If you prolong that into hours, then you can imagine how many customers you're impacting. Anytime we have an issue on the system, then we create a lot of queues in the ecosystem. And most importantly, we, we, we interfere with the trust that our customers have on us, which is not something that we would wish to do. And that is the reason why I'm proud of the team uh, that uh, we ensure that M-Pesa is always on and M-Pesa is always secure for our customers to be able to transact, M-Pesa being reliable uh, to our customers.